SoFi options are coming right around the corner. And we know this because of the copy of the JavaScript that's been leaked, as well as terms of service that have dropped, as well as their own Twitter account that has also leaked that this is gonna be coming out within the next two months. But this product is so important whenever it comes to both member growth and actual earnings. And this is so important that we actually nail this. Now, whenever it comes to the normal options contract that people can get from any of the big banks, they charge around 65 cents per contract. But if you wanna innovate on this product even more and actually take away that cost completely, you're looking more towards Weeble and Robinhood that actually only make money off the payment for order flow. This is way overdue for the company that calls them the one-stop shop for all financial services products, especially if they want it to be best in breed products, we better not have any cost whenever it comes to these contracts. This is a blatant open excuse for someone to choose Weeble or Robinhood rather than just so exclusively going with SoFi just simply because we don't offer options right now. But unlike the other products that SoFi has been trying to launch recently, options is extremely special because it should be leading to a larger growth in revenue. What I'm talking about can only truly be understood if we actually look at our competitors' financials. So let's take a look at Robinhood for a couple of reasons. One, they're public, and two, because they offer free commissions on the actual options trades, which should be exactly what SoFi is offering. In Q3 of 2022, Robinhood showed off a total amount of revenue of $361 million, of which their transaction-based revenue made up around $206 million worth. But let's take a deeper look into that breakdown of that revenue to see how it actually should show into some insights for whenever SoFi gets into options. With the current products we do offer, like Equity, Equities, for example, Robinhood showed off a 7% increase quarter over quarter to $31 million worth of revenue. Where cryptocurrencies, another product that SoFi does offer, saw a 12% decrease to $51 million quarter over quarter. Now, although that's two thirds of their actual segments that they cover in their transaction-based revenue, that actually only makes up around 40% of the overall amount of revenue. The remaining $124 million, or 60% of the total transaction-based revenue, is all from options. And although it's already making up the lion's share, it also grew by 10% quarter over quarter, outpacing anything else in the entire category. This just highlights how resilient options are in a completely depressed stock market, which means it's a great way to diversify your revenue streams. But if we were to have the same adoption for options over at SoFi in our last quarter, that same amount of $49 million that we actually received from our normal financial services business with options would have actually turned into $123 million that we would have reported for last quarter. But let's look at an even easier metric to understand. Average revenue per user, where Robinhood actually saw $63 per user on an annualized basis. SoFi, on the other hand, doesn't show off average revenue per user. They show off average revenue per product, which should be even lower considering one person can have multiple products, like a brokerage account, a checking account, as well as a credit card. Knowing that Robinhood's was made up of 60% options, if we were to compare that same sort of basis to SoFi, we would see $85 per product for SoFi if options made up around 60% of the total revenue. Remember that all of this monetization growth for SoFi is on top of the idea that we're also growing our accounts very fast as well. In our financial services segment, we saw our accounts grow 83% year over year, whereas Robinhood only saw accounts grow by 2.2% year over year. And just while I was looking into Robinhood's earnings, I got obsessed with comparing them all the way. So let me just go a little bit deeper just comparing these two companies because it gets hilarious. Financial services revenue for SoFi went from $12.6 million last year up to $49 million this year. Year. That's a 289% increase in the matter of a single year, where in that same time, Robinhood went from $365 million worth of revenue to 361, a 1% decrease in their total amount of revenue. This doesn't get any better for Robinhood as we look into net losses, which SoFi during the last quarter lost around $75 million. We're both in losses, right? But Robinhood lost $175 million, much more in the same time frame. okay? What about earnings per share? In the last quarter, SoFi lost 9 cents per share, whereas Robinhood lost 20 cents per share. But I know what you're going to say. Tanner, it doesn't make any sense to look at the companies this way if you're not actually looking at the valuations. Sure. So let's look at price to sales. At the time of recording this video, SoFi is actually at a price to sales ratio of 3.4 times, whereas Robinhood is at a price to sales ratio of 8 times. So if anyone's not getting a fair comparison here, it's SoFi. Now what about stock-based compensation? The big red flag for every SoFi bear that's out there. SoFi in the most recent quarter lost around 70 million dollars as an expense to stock-based compensation, where in the same time frame, Robinhood lost 110 million. Then this one's pretty juicy whenever we look at CEO compensation for the year of 2021, whenever we look at Anthony Noto actually taking home 103 million dollars from SoFi, which is a heck of a lot, it doesn't even pale in comparison to Vlad Teniev's payoff of 796 million dollars in the same time frame. Now I'd be quite biased to say that it's all bad for Robinhood. They do have a large advantage against us, and that's a pretty clean balance sheet. Where they 
they actually have around $9.3 billion in cash as of the time of recording this video, but $1.58 billion worth of debt. Whereas SoFi is the complete opposite, right? We have about $935 million in cash and $4.75 billion in debt. Now, those are a big difference, but if you don't know how to actually monetize the cash that you have on your balance sheet, what's the point of even having it? And it doesn't seem to be helping their price to book ratio at all, as SoFi is still at a 0.9 times price to book ratio as of the time of recording this video, but Robinhood's actually at a 1.6 times, making them much more expensive whenever it comes to their book value. This doesn't even factor in our lending platform or our technology platform that helps handle payments for other businesses, which all help diversify our revenue streams across the business, which means that in any macro environment that we actually stay pretty steady. Oh, but the 500,000 cash cards that Robinhood has given out to his customers looks pretty good, except for the fact that Galileo actually supplied every single last one of those cards, which is a company of SoFi's, which means we take a paycheck from every single customer that Robinhood has. So I guess it's pretty good that they succeed too, because at the end of the day, it really just goes back into SoFi's pocket. 